This is coverage of the test flight of the DB-7, technically the DB-7D, nicknamed the Shark. It is one of four proposals using this body with different engine configurations, and we may see some of the other configurations in other test flights. The goal of this mission and all of the other configurations is to send an unmanned vehicle into orbit around Earth. The probe part is uh, 0.2 tons, and so that is the technical payload capacity for this launcher and it uses an SRB and a liquid engine, uh, the RL-10, burning liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. We are flying out of Tanegashima, Japan today because flying out of Vandenberg Air Force Base to orbit is not a safe thing to do. It overflies the entire continental United States, uh, contiguous United States, and so that was not an option. This flight will of course go over the Pacific Ocean as we now prepare for the start of the flight. And there you see the solid rocket boosters and the RL-10 lighting. The solid rocket boosters will light and uh, burn for one minute. And they are simply there to get the rocket to a high enough altitude so that the RL-10 can operate efficiently. They are, in fact, uh, just the tail end of those nacelles you see there and will be ejected off. They will be separated once they are done burning to save mass. This is the heaviest uh, aircraft that the, that the EDB has launched. It uh, comes in at 19 tons and almost all of that is fuel, uh, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, as the empty mass is 1.8 tons. Uh, unfortunately, Tanegashima was not able to allow us to launch uh, towards the easterly direction. We're actually launching west first and the, and the craft will actually have to turn around now with the solid rocket boosters off, we are at 3,000 meters, uh, going at 159 meters per second, and the craft is going to turn towards 90 degrees in order to continue on its way to orbit. This is of course somewhat uh, less efficient, and we'll try and get clearance to launch east eastward directly in future flights, but this will be a good test of the capacity of this uh, craft, and perhaps uh, if we are short of orbit this time, that will mean that launching uh, eastward directly might uh, be enough. So uh, here we are, and uh, we are past uh, 5 kilometers and 180 meters per second as, as the DB-7 seems to be completing its turn. Uh, th it is a ground controlled system, so this is not automated, and that is for safety reasons as well as uh, uh, certain qualms about having the whole system automated in the first place. Okay, uh, past two minutes in, we've got uh, approaching seven kilometers in altitude, 220 meters per second. This is an RL-10B2 we see burning here, and it will burn for 10 minutes and five seconds in total. It is, of course, the same rocket that the EDB has been using uh, up till now, as uh, we have a read at 9,600 meters, 259 meters per second in altitude, uh, 7 minutes and 30 odd seconds left in the rocket burn. We are now approaching Mach 1 here. We're now past the sound barrier at uh, 12,760 meters, that's 12.76 uh, kilometers uh, past uh, 30,000 feet. This craft is not expected to return. If it does make it into orbit, it is not able to re-enter. So this is simply an attempt to see whether this configuration has any benefit over a vertical rocket launch. After all, right now, the wings have provided the vertical speed for the craft. The rocket is solely providing the horizontal speed. And so it is using lift to gain altitude. And that is why the craft will stay in the lower atmosphere for longer than any other rocket launch, obviously. Of course, the RL-10 is also providing much less thrust than a launcher would have to in order to launch it vertically. Um, right now it is uh, barely above uh, uh, thrust weight ratio of 1 
At launch, the thrust to weight ratio was 0.72 with the SRBs. And we have it at uh, 21 kilometers now, 21 kilometers in altitude, 486 meters per second in surface horizontal speed. All of the velocities will be reported as surface horizontal speed. And uh, continuing on here. So it is in the upper atmosphere as far as uh, it is certainly beyond the capabilities of most aircraft at this point. Still relatively slow, but that most of the acceleration provided by the RL-10 will come close to the end of the burn as the craft uh, reduces in mass. Uh, some, some stability issues here. Not entirely sure what the reason for that is. Uh, no communication from the pilot, the ground controller, who uh, who is completely focused on this. And at t plus five minutes, we have it at 28 kilometers, 926 meters per second past Mach three. The burn is continuing nominally as uh, no no significant issues so far. The flight path is as expected. Again, this will burn up on re-entry and obviously that's that's the reason why it is an unmanned flight in this case. The first test, the first attempt uh, by the EDB Aerospace Division to get into orbit and uh, we have it now at uh, oh dear, uh, we're at 32 kilometers, uh, 1150 uh, more than 1150 meters per second and we've had some sort of explosions um, on our view it seems to be the nose cones at the front of the nacelles uh, I'm sure the EDB will want to talk to the manufacturers of those nose cones uh, clearly they were not able to withstand uh, temperatures that the uh, aircraft is going through as we are now at 36,000 meters uh, 1375 meters per second so uh, those are fairly modest numbers and the nose cones should have been able to handle that. Possibly they will switch to different manufacturers for those nose cones. Now coming up on 40 kilometers in altitude, 1,645 meters per second. Still substantial heating on the underside of the DB7 here, but uh, continuing on doing well. The other configurations for this uh, flight used jets and uh, possibly some solid fuel boosters on the wingtips in some cases, uh, but uh, those were found to be too heavy in terms of the empty mass to produce any real attempt at orbit. The best option would have uh, gotten to about 6,000 meters per second, which is far short of the 7,800 needed for orbit. Flight is uh, exiting the hotter portions of the atmosphere as uh, friction diminishes. We are now at 48 kilometers, 2,384 meters per second. Obviously this is a flight that is meant to demonstrate the technology and then bring uh, some data and of course it's feeding data back continuously about the flight so that uh, more substantial developments can be made. Whether or not the combination of an SRB and liquid fuel uh, rocket as this has is the right way to go is still open to debate as we are now at 53.5 kilometers 2878 meters per second and uh, possibly a jet rocket configuration might still be might still be viable. There is of course a third way in which case uh, you have a single engine that can switch between air breathing and uh, closed cycle modes uh, but we do not have that access to that kind of engine at the moment at the EDB. So far, most development has focused on the RL-10, which has proven to be a workhorse of the entire program. Uh, of course, uh, bringing us the first uh, first flight uh, from the ground to space, a self-launched aircraft. 
that was able to break the Karman line. As the DB7 is now at a 70 kilometers in altitude, 4,273 meters per second. One more minute of burn time. We are projected to be under the, the requirements. Uh, we will not make orbit with this flight, it would seem. We'll see how close we get as the craft is now at 84 kilometers, 5,300 meters per second. We are approaching a uh, thrust weight ratio of 6 now, so most of the acceleration occurs right around here. 15 seconds left of burn time. Altitude 105 kilometers, 6,676 meters per second. Leveling off with the remaining gimbling power of the RL-10 and the engine is out. 112,745 meters in altitude and climbing, 7,100 meters per second at maximum velocity. Uh, that surface horizontal speed and you can see the resulting orbit on this map here. Uh, basically crossing the Pacific Ocean but uh, not managing to get into orbit. The apoapsis is 573 kilometers so uh, fairly high. Perhaps some trajectory changes can be used to uh, fix this in the future and uh, we'll be back with you with uh, re-entry information. Here we are with continuing views of the DB7 as it proceeded to Apoapsis. DB7 had uh, no problem maneuvering in, uh, in space using uh, very tiny amounts of RCS thrust. The RCS thrusters are on the nose of the craft alongside uh, two 1 kN thrusters that would be used to settle fuel in the tanks for the RL-10 should it need to refire. In this case that was not necessary of course. And here the DB7 is uh, primed for re-entry and uh, angled up. It was not possible to angle it up uh, much more this, than this once it uh, started uh, hitting the uh, upper part of the atmosphere in earnest and in fact uh, once the, the craft uh, hit some serious drag began to nose down uncontrollably. There was no way to keep the nose up profile as it turned out that it was a little bit heavy in the nose with none of the fuel on board. And we see here a loss of control. There was uh, simply no way to to control the vehicle at this point as it descended uh, below 80 kilometers in altitude and then 70. Very quickly of course because uh, this was not, this had not reached orbit and being just short of orbit is basically disastrous. Uh, get ready for some loud noises. And there you have it, uh, the fate of the DB7D. As expected, of course, it was expected to uh, burn up on re-entry, uh, but it did fail to make orbit and so adjustments will have to be made. Uh, perhaps we can uh, get the eastward launch with, so that uh, the craft does not have to turn around. Better nose cones, of course, would have also helped uh, to reduce drag in that part of the flight, though that was a thin part of the atmosphere. But in any case, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this uh, coverage of the test flight of the DB7. We hope you enjoyed it. And with that, this is the EDB signing off.